In this video, we're going to take a look at how you enable your Synology router to be used as a file server. The Synology router's file server feature is perfect for home users wishing to share files over their network. However, as Synology don't currently offer a built-in backup facility for your data, if you're planning to store important information on your network, you will be better served using a dedicated network attached storage device. So with that proviso, let's get started. As you can see, I've logged back into the Synology Router Manager. If we open the control panel, you can see the options that we will be using. There is User, Storage, and File Services. We're going to first look at Storage. As you can see here, we're warned that there are no available storage devices and that we need to attach a compatible storage device. So let's attach our USB 3 external hard drive to the router. If we now leave the storage options pane and then return to the storage settings, the router will register the USB external hard drive we've connected. You may have noticed that a notification briefly appears. If we take a look at the notification, you can see that the router has automatically lowered the data transfer speed of the USB 3 hard drive. This is because USB 3 will interfere with the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi signal. However, on a small network, this will make little to no difference to how file sharing performs. So with the USB hard drive now attached to the router, we can take a look at the options underneath the Shared Folder tab. By default, the whole of the USB hard drive is made into a share. This share is given a generic name. I'm going to change the name to File Share to make it easier to identify. As it's very easy to accidentally delete files in a share, the next option we have is the Recycle Bin. When enabled, the Recycle Bin allows you to recover files deleted from your network share. However, it should be noted that while the Recycle Bin feature is well worth enabling, it does reduce the storage capacity of your hard drive. Finally, we have user permissions for the hard drive share. Currently, there is only one account that has access to the USB hard drive. This is the administrator's account. We'll be looking at creating user accounts in a moment. Before leaving these options, I'm going to apply the changes that I've made. Let's now take a look at the storage options. In order to work with the USB hard drive, we first need to highlight it. This will activate the Eject and Format buttons. The Eject button allows you to dismount the USB hard drive and should be used before removing the hard drive from the router. Format, as the name suggests, allows you to format the hard drive, wiping it of all data. The Advanced settings allows you to set system databases, change default permissions and adjust the write cache. At the bottom of the Storage tab pane, you're provided with the different methods that you can use to access the files stored on the external storage. This could be either via a file explorer, a file browser, or a web browser. The next option is Media Indexing. Media indexing scans multimedia files such as photos, music and videos that are stored on the Synology router. It's then indexed to make it ready for multimedia applications. Hibernation allows you to power down the USB hard drive when it's been inactive for a specific amount of time. This helps to extend the life of the hard drive but will only work with USB hard drives that support hibernation. For now I'm going to be leaving this option disabled. The next group of settings we need to review are file services. You can see that Windows File Service was enabled when we plug the USB hard drive into the router. This in turn created a Windows work group called Work Group. SMB2 is enabled by default, which means that Apple Macintosh computers will also happily connect to any network shares. We're also given the network path for a PC and a Mac to allow them to connect to any network shares we create. I'm going to copy this link so that we can test the network share later in this video.
Mac file service is specifically for Apple Macintosh computers. If I wish to use the USB hard drive as a method to wirelessly back up using Time Machine, I would enable Mac file server and set the Time Machine to file share. Again, Synology provide a link to use on a Mac that would allow me to access shared folders on the router. But as Macs are able to work with SMB2, I'm not going to enable Mac file service. Having reviewed and updated the settings for file services, I'm going to select apply to ensure that any changes that I have made are updated. The final settings that we have to review are the creation of user accounts to provide access to our shares. Within the user pane, you can see that we currently have one user account. This is the administrator's account and it has read-write access over the whole of the USB external hard drive. Using the add symbol, we need to create an account for each person that will be accessing the network share. We need to create a unique username and a strong password for each account. You can see that there are three shared folder permission options. No access, read write access and read only access. At this stage, we're simply going to click apply to these settings. Setting folder permissions will be done when we create a shared folder. Let's return to storage and create a shared folder. First, we need to click the add button. When the create new shared folder window opens, we need to enter the name of the shared folder that we'd like to create. In this example, I'm going to call this folder public. Again, we need to decide if we're going to enable Recycle Bin. Then we select OK to create the folder. With the public folder created, a user list of names is displayed underneath user permissions. By default, the administrator's account will always have read-write access, but for any other accounts, you need to select what access permissions to that folder you wish them to have. Once user permissions have been set, you need to click Apply. So let's review the two shares that we have. The first share is over the whole of the USB hard drive to which only the administrator has any access. The second is to a public folder which the administrator and the MyDoodad account both have full read-write access to. So let's try and connect to these shared folders. Within macOS, if we open the Finder, then select Shared All, we will see the Synology router. When we select the Synology router, we're not shown the shared drives. This is because we are not connected. We need to select the Connect As button. This opens a login window. As we have a user account, we are classed as a registered user, so we simply need to enter the username and password we created on the router. We can now see the file share and the public folder share. If I try and open the file share folder, because I do not have permission to access it, I am presented with this message. Let's select a new finder window and try and open the public folder. Again, I have to select connect as and enter my user account details. If I tick the option remember this password in my keychain, I will no longer be prompted for the password when I try and connect to my shares. When I click connect, I'm shown my network shares. Let's try and open the public folder. You can see that we already have a recycle folder that allows us to recover deleted files. But because we have read write access, we can also create new folders or documents. Let's dismount from our shared folders and look at an alternative way that we can access a network share on the Mac. On the menu bar, if we select Go, then Connect to Server. In Server Address, if I paste the link I copied earlier, you can see that I'm using SMB colon forward slash forward slash Synology router to connect to the file shares. Again, I'm prompted to enter a valid username and password to access the network shares, but a finder window opens to show me my network folders. 
So that was accessing network folders on a Mac, but let's take a look at accessing the same folders on a Windows 10 PC. If we open Windows Explorer, then from the address bar, we type in backslash backslash 192.168.1.1, which is the IP address of the router, we are shown our shared folders. As you can see, I've added a few additional folders, but let's try and open the public folder. As on the Mac, we have full access to the public folder, and you can see the untitled folder that I previously created. So to recap, in this video we've added a USB device to our Synology router, created a network share, created user accounts, and then set permissions to our network shares.